Hello, I'm Shane, your host for Radical Rocks. Today, we're gonna to learn how to harden rocks. These are porous rocks. You can see here on the table, we've got turquoise, we have um, chrysocolla, we have rhodochrosite, we have some vericite, uh, we have the Russian purple, uh, purple rock, I think it's uh, sugalite. We are going to do this in a vacuum chamber. This will allow the hardener uh, resin to go deep into the pores. You may want to stop this video and get a notebook so you can take notes because I'll be telling you every step of how to do this to get the best results. So I want to thank you guys for tuning in. You can join any of our social media. We're on MeWe, Parlor, Gitter, Truth Social, Facebook, and of course, we have our podcast, uh, Radical Rocks. We're on every application. Come check us out. It's a totally different format over there. Just conversation, current topics, rocks, minerals, fossils, and so on. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. Anytime you're dealing with chemicals, you'll want to wear proper protection. Um, this is just how I do it. I don't want to give you exclusive advice or, or any kind of advice that says this is the exact perfect way to do it. Um, this is how I do it for your informational purposes. Um, I use a little degreaser. I always make sure and have a dog nearby. That always helps. Man's best friend. Woman's best friend too. All right. So you don't really want to touch your slabs with your bare hand. You can see we've got a variety of nice gemstones. We've got uh, some chrysocolla with some blue azurite. We have bitrudal azurite, vericite, um, rhodochrosite. We have some uh, charlite, I think that is. Um, chrysocolla, turquoise, different little pieces of turquoise from different areas here. So, um, first thing you want to do is just uh, get these into a degreaser. And get them clean. Alright, we'll clean these out and then dry them off real good. So oh, we've degreased these. I just used an industrial purpose degreaser. You could use Dawn. Just make sure you rinse them very thoroughly. Rinse them about three or four times. Let them dry. And then now we're ready to use the acetone. This will clean the pores very deep. Um, I think I'll put the stones in first. Just kind of stack the longer ones on their side a little bit. And... Uh, Get these all in there. Okay. And then uh, see if that's enough to get them. If this doesn't get too dirty, you can reuse it again. So you can see they're pretty much completely submerged in the acetone. So we'll let those soak in there for about 20 minutes. I also have a little brush, clean brush. I'll brush them and get them very, very clean. The acetone is soaked in real good. And now we can take these out and let these dry. Um, again, don't touch them with your hands because the oils of your hands will get in there. We don't want anything to block that resin from getting in there. Um, a lot of people have asked me over the years um, what kind of stones they can use this process on. Well, because there's heat involved, you wouldn't want to use it on an opal or crystals that could have water in them like aquamarine, emeralds, 
burl, anything like that. Um, this is for a porous material. And uh, here's a little tiny funnel. A lot of people don't know this, but uh, I quit drinking once they invented the funnel. That funnel makes it a lot easier. All right. Little humor for you. Very, very little. So we'll let that dry out, and then we will get back to the next process. So you're probably looking at this going, Shane, what in the heck are you doing? Well, we'll get to that in a minute. First thing I want to say is I did a, a video on hardening turquoise and stones a couple years ago or so, and everybody asked me questions over and over again. Always read the instructions, okay? The It comes with instructions. Now, we are doing a different technique, but we'll try to follow the instructions the best we can and incorporate it into the vacuum technique, okay? So the directions say that after you clean this with acetone, if you have oil, wash it with a degreaser first and then the acetone, let it dry. We've done that. It says use only the hardener, in, or only the, the resin rather. So in the kit, you get a bottle of resin and you get hardener, okay? That's what you get. You do not put the hardener in the first step, okay? Only the resin. You need to put it in a metal tin. You can use a pie pan, you can use a Christmas tin, whatever. I like to put a little bit of resin on the bottom first and um, let the bottom get coated. You can reuse this. Now there's a another popular YouTube video where a lady does the vacuum technique um she does not heat it for this part of it but um we will we will heat it this part if you don't have heat well according to some folks it does work without heat let's see if we can get a little better shot here all right so it does work without heat, according to another YouTuber. But the instructions say, if you can get it to 150 degrees for uh, an hour, that's better. So the heat technique, you're basically using the heat to open up the pores of the rock to let the resin go deep inside. The hardener, it, resin will eventually harden, okay, without a hardener. It'll eventually get harder. It it's kind of stays sticky, but uh, heat, the higher the heat is, the better, the better it will cure. So the hardener, when you go to the stage of putting the hardener on there, somehow, that is going to penetrate in there enough to cause all of it to uh, to harden, okay? And that, you know, that's somewhat true and somewhat not true, right? So sometimes when you get hardened rocks and you, I've done it with my hardening technique, if you grind a whole lot off, it's not as hard in the middle. It just isn't. So this technique... We're hoping to get it even deeper. Even deeper. We do not want to use that. I have extra um, Opticon resin right here. This kit is the 224 kit. Fracture sealer. This was made originally for healing cracks and stones. And it uh, works quite nicely. So I'm going to try to completely submerge these. At least the majority of them. Okay. They are submerged. Now, since I had some on the bottom, I know the bottom is already saturated. I know there's a couple that are sticking out. That's okay. Um, my, those are just experimental little pieces. The slabs that I have are completely submerged, so I'm happy. Now, you'll see I have this pot sitting on a heating pad. 
and I have a light pointed at it, okay? Um, I have a thermostat, a thermometer on there. I don't know if you can see that or not. We're up to about 113 degrees. I don't know if we're gonna be able to get it up to 150 or not. We're in the sun. Um, I'm gonna do my best to, to get it hot. I'll turn on this light too. Hopefully I don't trip any breakers around here. So here we go. I got two lights beaming on that thing. I've got a hot pad underneath. I may not make 150, but anything close is going to heat up this liquid and um, make it thinner. It's thinner, it can get into the cracks better. So this fits in my bucket just so into my pressure chamber. This just sits on top, okay? And then something I have not seen anyone else do, what we are gonna do, I'm gonna show you the proper way to operate a vacuum pump. I have had this vacuum pump for 30 years. The reason I've had it for 30 years is I know how to take care of it. So let's go over that. Like I said, hopefully you have a notebook so you can get this extra information, okay? And if you could put this pot on, on a heating, uh, another type of heating device where you could control it, that'd be great. We're already up to 135, so that's pretty good. It looks like I might get really close to my 150, okay? All right. The vacuum pump, you want to make sure the oil is up. You always want to seal everything off on the vacuum pump when it is not in operation. Let me make sure you can see it. All right, you'll need a hose, okay? This is the oil port where you fill the oil. You fill it to the sight glass. There's a line in the middle that shows you where to do it. This is a valve that turns on and off. These are the ports. This is called the ballast. The ballast port needs to be open before you start the vacuum pump or you are starting the vacuum under a load right away, which is ba very bad on the valves that are in this, okay? Because it, uh, it is using, uh, it's the velocity of air coming out causes a vacuum and uh, it wears them down. The manufacturer says to open this ballast port up. So it is open right now. We'll take off the port that we're going to use. There's two available. Snug it up securely. This will go on top of our chamber. Securely. We will open this valve. We will open this valve. And now we will turn on our vacuum pump. We will, after I turn on the vacuum pump, we will get the camera and we will take a look inside. I will not be talking because the machine will be running. It will be too noisy um, to talk over. So, and once it starts, we will close this ballast port right here. Hopefully, yes, you can see that in the view. This will get closed. So, and then we will leave it on the vacuum pump for an hour or two, okay? We could leave it on longer, but we're gonna probably leave it on an hour or two. We'll see. What we're looking for is the bubbles. What's happening when this comes on, what you're going to be seeing is bubbles coming out of the rocks. That's air. That's air coming out of the rocks. When the air comes out of the rocks, guess what fills that space? The resin. Yes, the resin fills the space so we can get the resin to soak in deep into our stone. So let's get at it. Okay, we can see it pulling down the vacuum. All right, let's see if we can look inside, but it's pulled it down to a vacuum. And you're gonna start seeing
Those bubbles are the air coming out of the rock. So wherever the air comes out, that means the resin is going in. So there's a lot of air right now. So hopefully this won't bubble over. I'll keep an eye on it, make sure it doesn't bubble over. And then we'll come back and look at it. All right, looks like the bubbles are pretty sustained. Right now, it doesn't look like they're gonna go any higher, so we'll come back and check it in 20 minutes. All right, so it's been vacuuming down for about an hour, and the bubbles have really reduced, pretty much just about gone, but I'm gonna let it go maybe another hour. The temperature's been regulating between about 144 and 160. I just kind of move it back and forth from the, the lights. I've got the heating pad and the lights on it. I'm trying to keep it around 150. Um, I think I'm gonna get a really good saturation on those stones. So we'll let it go for a while and I will take them out and clean them off with gloves on, of course, and get them ready for the last step after they cool down. Okay, I've been on here about two hours. It's starting to sprinkle, so I'm going to turn this off. And uh, it's still holding a vacuum pretty good, actually, even with it off. Turn that right there. And uh, there's a little bit of bubbling going on. I'm going to let these cool down. I'm, I'm going to unplug the heating, turn off the lights. And uh, I've maintained a good 140 to 160 through all this. So we should have super good penetration. And we'll get with the next step here in just a minute. All right. So we've been cooling for many, many hours. Um, the boiling has stopped quite a while ago. We're still under a pretty good vacuum, but we're going to go ahead and open that up. And we can take the lid off. Take out our gemstones. Let's see. Get a good view of this. Okay. All right. So we want to take these out and uh, pretty much wipe off all the resin that we can. Brand new clean brush. <clears throat> so you could use uh, something to pick this out with. It's going to be rather time consuming, but we don't need, we don't need all this on here. Okay. Um, actually, I want to put them, yeah, I think I'll, I'll put them in here, and probably should have some paper, I probably should have put some paper down or something, because, uh, and they're stuck on the bottom pretty bad, um, took them out of the little white bowl over there and pulled them out of here. And uh, it's best probably if you could let them sit on a wire or something. It says you can even wipe them off. I don't know what you'd want to wipe them off with. Um, something that doesn't leave lint. But what we're going to do now is a mix. There's about a cap's worth of resin in there. We're going to take the hardener. It's about 50 uh, drops per half ounce, I think it says. Let's see. When all else fails, follow the directions. Um, yeah, 50 drops of hardener 
would be required for a half ounce of resin. Now the bottle, I guess, says 10 to one, or at least it used to, um, but they suggest uh, eight to one. So I would say a little more hardener would be okay at this step, this stage. Um, I don't know that that's a, an eighth of an ounce or a half an ounce, but I'm just gonna eyeball about an, what I think is an eighth. Plus, we gotta count the goop that's all over the stones. I mean, look at this, look at these stones. They're just all gooped up. So I'm just gonna mix it right with a paintbrush here with the hardener. And um, I'm just gonna start picking them up. And I'm gonna do it over this because it's gonna drip a lot. And uh, I'm gonna space these out. And that will, that will energize the, um, the resin to harden. Now they say uh, you can coat it with this and then wipe off the additional. But since you can just grind off the additional anyway, we are not going to worry about that part of it. We're just going to coat them up with the hardener. and get them to start setting. Now this batch doesn't say anything about heating at this point. You can see these stones are gonna look really good and they'll be nice and hard to carve and polish and shape. And this rhodochrosite, you know, this one little piece I cut, it was really porous. And I made a cabochon up of one, and I wasn't really happy with it. And I remembered that, and I was like, you know, this will fill in all the cracks, make it even more durable. It doesn't change the way it looks at all. Um, so that's a pretty cool piece of turquoise right there with quartz. There's another piece of turquoise right there. I just want the matrix to stay onto the turquoise really nice. It's decent turquoise, actually. It's pretty darn hard. It's from uh, Ikata Peak. By the way, if you see anything here, uh, or you're interested in a particular lapidary material, let me know. Um, I've got an Etsy store, and uh, I'm trying to put a little bit of time into that and get some material out there. I just, I've been busy. I was doing it on eBay and um, I don't know, it seems like eBay just doesn't have the people on it like it used to back in the day. So I'm gonna try Etsy. It's a little more personal and um, Seems to attract better sellers and better buyers, honestly. Because I buy a lot of stuff from there, too, when I want specialized stuff. Um, I've had pretty good success or some more of that from Russia. So, yeah, I've got a lot of turquoise from Ikata Peak. And I've got some Kingman. Arizona turquoise, um, real beautiful robin blue, robin egg blue, and um, it's already been hardened. Actually, that stuff was done with uh, what they call the Zachary technique. They're smaller pieces, and they're really good and hard all the way through. I've cut that stuff a bunch. Really nice to work with. All right. So, I, you know, even though I did that, I still got almost half of it left. So, you know, it's not a big deal. All right. So we'll let that dry and uh, then we'll get back. 
So you can see the slabs have been um, drying since we put the hardener on. I saw another YouTuber do hardening process and she had used aluminum foil and said it worked really good. Last night when I checked this one, the aluminum stuck on there, had a hard time getting it off. It's still on there. That's definitely not something you want to get into your grinding wheels. Um, I know it can play havoc if it gets in there. So you would want to clean that off. But this morning I peeled off one and uh, the material's harder and man, it is really nice. It is, it's, it feels like it's a lot heavier, these rocks. It's dried really well. Um, some of them are peeling off. Oh, that one didn't. That one came off. Use uh, like a pie pan or, or some metal because the aluminum, um, once it's completely dry, it's peeling off better. I will give it that. So that's good news. Um, let's see, that one peeled right off. That was no problem. So it is peeling off for the most part. And then this plastic, uh, or not plastic, this epoxy that's hardened around the edges, that'll just grind right off. So no problem. Really, these seem very high quality. Um, I really, as far as the hardening process on this, man, this these are feeling really good. So I've had good success with the Opticon before. Wow, look at that. Look at that. Um, I can't remember what this stuff is called. Sugar Light or Char Light. You can see it is really a lot more sturdy material now. So that's great because trying to make a little tiny... Um, cab with that stuff that is really gonna help so yeah it's peeling off looking really good guys every time i do a video people ask me about this material i have not sold any um i might cut this down the middle and offer these for sale i don't know I might offer one or two of these for sale, but I brought these back from Israel. So if I do put them up for sale, they're going to be a premium for sure. Because uh, I hate to let this stuff go, but I might. I might just do it. We'll see. And then the rhodochrosite. Oh, yeah. That filled everything. Look at the surface of that. I don't know if you can see the surface of that, but... Man, it is completely filled in all the cracks. Um, I can't wait to cut that and see what that's going to look like. That is really neat. Well, guys, I think that about does it. I want to thank you again for tuning in. Remember, rock hounds don't die. They petrify.